Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to loop the coolant line to bypass the heaters inside your bus so that you can remove the heaters for your demo. If this video is helpful, can you smash that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm, it really helps out a lot. Okay, we are under the driver's side of the bus right here. I've got a flat nose, so I've got a big space here. Um, if you have a dog nose bus, it's probably going to look a little different. Um, and each bus is going to have lines in the different uh, places and stuff. But this will get you the general idea of what's going on, okay? So these two lines right here are our coolant lines, which is why they're insulated because they're going back there to run the heater. Um, and so what I'm going to do, as you can see right here, you've got a loop coming up to run the heater for the um, the driver right here and then you've also got these loops going back here to your rear heaters so the first thing that I'm going to do is just take the insulation off from these the rear loop here I'm going to leave the driver side heater attached um, you can bypass that if you want to and if you do then take these off um, but essentially what we're going to do here is we are going to get a coupler like this that you can get at Home Depot or Menards. I've got a one inch coupler. Um, and you're gonna basically cut these two lines right here. And then you're gonna attach this hose to this hose back here. So basically the coolant runs here and then just loops right back around. And then we can take this part out. Um, what I'm actually going to do, um, and I'm going to cut my line up here and then loop it back around and hook it right in here. So this line, uh, one of these, probably this line right here will come up and around and come right back and hook into this line right here at this coupler right here. All right. So what I did is took a big uh, set of needle nose vice grips here and clamped off uh, this hose right here, which is the one that I'm going to um, cut. Uh, once you cut this, there's going to be a bunch of coolant that runs out. So something you need to keep in mind is if you just ran your bus, then this coolant is hot. So right now mine's pretty warm because I just ran my bus. Um, so you want to let that cool down. Um, and then you're going to probably want several five gallon buckets here. Um, to catch all the coolant that drains out of these lines. Okay, I've got the first line cut. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut this hose clamp off um, and prep that coupler so that I can then cut this hose up here and loop it around to hook onto there. Now inside the bus here, you need to uncover these uh, lines here that run between the heaters. Um, I've got two heaters and the line goes all the way down there. So what you need to do, these are Phillips heads on mine, but just remove all the screws and remove these metal panels. After you're done tearing the metal covers off there, you might have noticed this where it runs down into the floor. What's that? That is a pump and a heater system here. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is unhook this hose clamp right here and take this hose off and drain some coolant out right here out of one of the hoses and then just drain it as if you're draining a garden hose. If you live in a cold climate and you've used a hose during the winter, you know, you lift it up and drain all the water out so it doesn't freeze. going to do the same thing here with... Um, the line there and run it out of our one cut line up at the front. So actually my plan with this pump is to use this as a, uh, uh, a circulatory pump for a solar hot water heater in the future. Um, so maybe check out that video when it comes out in the future. Hit the subscribe button. Okay this turned out to be a bit of a mess but after I popped this hose off, it started squirting out of here quite a bit. My plan was to just hold my hand over it until this got done draining, but there was quite a bit of pressure. So I ended up pulling the line that's right there, pulled it through, cut part of the hose off, 
and used it to uh, direct the flow there. Obviously a little bit got away from me. So back in the bus, um, I just pulled the heater back this way, um, started lifting it up to the highest point and I'm draining these. And it was running out into the bucket there a second ago. Um, so I'm just gonna keep lifting these up when I feel like the heater's empty. I'm gonna unhook the hoses here from the heater and just start draining them out. These lines can be a pain to get off. What I do is just make a slice across right here like this, and then you can kind of pull this back and break it loose. All right, so here I'm draining the hose. You can see it's running out down there into the bucket. With these here, um, I'm just gonna unhook right here and right here, which is where it goes up and through the floor. And I'm just gonna put a one inch plug uh, in each of these for right now until I decide what to do with this setup here. Okay, we've got the heaters unhooked here. Both of them are unhooked. All the uh, lines have been taken out of the bus, except for this last one here. Um, so my plan here is I'm just going to cut this. Um, well, actually, I'm going to unhook it down here, and then I'm going to pull this hose out through the hole here let it drain a little bit into the bucket, and then I can cut it to length wherever I want underneath the bus there and hook it up to that fitting down there. All right, there we've got our coolant line successfully looped. Um, so I'm just gonna basically zip tie this up here so there's no kink in here and that this hose isn't rubbing on any sharp objects or anything like that and that it's hanging free. Last thing we need to do is unhook these wires that run the fans and our heaters. So you can see this runs right into the fuse box right here. You see it's this huge bundle of orange wire, orange and black wires here on mine. So we're gonna go to the fuse box. All right, so we can see them right there. So basically, I'm just gonna follow these clump of wires here up here and you can see those connectors moving when I'm wiggling. I'm just gonna unplug them right here. For this style of connector, all you need to do is pinch these two tabs right here and then pull it apart. So let's see here, just like that. So it looks like I've got at least two, three, maybe four right there that I'm gonna unplug. All right, mine ended up being four plugs here. So now I'm Basically, it'd be nice if uh, you have somebody to help you um, go in the inside and just pull these through the little hole there and you can pull them through one at a time and just make sure that the connectors don't get caught on any wires here. But you can do it by yourself. That's what I'm going to do. There you go. The heaters are out. Take them out. Some uh, good scrap value here with the copper and the aluminum. You could scrap these pretty good or if you're in a cold climate with a bunch of rednecks you could probably sell this to somebody to make a garage heater if they've got an outdoor wood burning stove cycle the water through those you got fans built in boom garage heater you'll want to make sure that you top off your coolant because um, i'm sure you lost a lot of coolant out of your radiator at least i'm sure that i did um, this might actually also be a good time to do like a radiator flush. So I'll just get some radiator flush like this. Uh, flush that radiator out, get it nice and clean. It's a good time to do it. Um, I'm going to have an Amazon link in the description below where you can get some radiator flush and stuff like that if you want. If you buy anything on Amazon through my affiliate link, um, I make a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything. That's about all there is to it. So if this video is helpful, smash that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a good one.